बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम डियर स्टूडेंट्स अस्सलाम वालेकुम वेलकम टू आवर नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑन अ शॉर्ट स्टोरी इंक्लूडेड इन आवर सिलेबस ए रोज फॉर एमिली बाय विलियम फॉकनर विलियम फॉकनर एज अ राइटर इज आवर टॉपिक ऑफ टुडे विलियम फॉकनर is a renowned american novelist poet short story writer film script writer and many more a man of literary taste belonging to the south of american continent american nation he stands as a prominent figure as a writer as a novelist as a short story writer especially although as a poet he was not so much renowned yet as a novelist and story writer he got to pulitzer prizes and a nobel prize for literature as well uh, for his financial needs he was associated with hollywood film script writing and spent a lot of time of his life later in his career to make money for his living let's begin our today's a topic william faulkner as a, a writer our dear students uh, we will restrict ourselves Uh, simply to uh, the topic under discussion william faulkner as a novelist as a short story writer as a literary figure going through the details of his biography and his literary career we will try to uh, find out what features uh, he has as a, a writer of short stories and as a novelist especially a prose writer you may say i remember that he was an essayist he wrote in some of the dailies magazines of his times uh, from time to time as a novelist william faulkner was a nobel prize winning novelist of the american south who wrote challenging prose and created the fictional uh, type of a county named uh, a fancy full or a self created county yokno potwafwa yokno potwafwa he is best known for such novels as the sound and the fury and as i lay dying aziz talba o talibat ye apne फिक्शन के लिए ज़्यादा मरूफ हैं एज ए नावल नगार अगरचे फोकनर जो है वो एक मल्टी डायमेंशनल लिटरेरी फिगर हैं पोइट भी थे लेकिन इतनी शहरत नहीं मिली इनकी पोइट्री को जितनी कि इनकी शार्ट स्टोरीज को और नावल्स को मिली इसलिए बतौर नावल नगार जो हैं ये ज़्यादा मरूफ हैं ख़ास तौर पर इनका ये जो नावल है द साउंड एंड द फ्यूरी it is a very well renowned um, novel in literary circles of the world american writer william faulkner was born in new albany mississippi in 1897 much of his early work was poetry but he became famous for his novels set in the american south belonging to his own region that is frequently in his fabricated uh, county you know what of for with works that included the sound and the fury and as i lay dying and absolom absolom his controversial 1931 novel sanctuary was turned into two films so later on most of his novels and stories were turned into films and he um, 
just sold his stories to the film makers uh, for money and uh, this novel especially the sanctuary uh, uh, was filmed in shape of the story of temple drake as well as a later 61 project of this uh, film is it was refilmed in 1961 sanctuary the novel faulkner was awarded the 1949 nobel prize in literature and ultimately won two pulitzer prizes and two national book awards as well he died on july 6 1962 Dear students, William Faulkner is a Southern writer, through and through. He depicts the same kind of crime, the same kind of exploitation, the same kind of bloodshed, the same kind of violence we find in these Southern Gothic stories, the horror stories you call them. William Cuthbert Faulkner. the original spelling of his last name excluding you uh, was born in the small town of new albany mississippi on september 25th 1897 uh, as a teenager faulkner was taken by drawing he also greatly enjoyed reading and writing poetry in fact by the age of 12 or 13 he began intentionally making Scottish romantic stories especially Robert Burns and English romantics A. E. Houseman and A. C. Swinburne in his poems and in his stories however despite his remarkable intelligence or perhaps because of it school bored him and he never earned a high school diploma this was a deficiency he had got no opportunity to accomplish any formal education after dropping out faulkner worked in carpentry and sporadically as a clerk at his grandfather's bank in his early days it is the beginning of his career as a writer he started uh, his hands at poetry um, just copying the themes from the english poets romantic poets scottish and english romantic poets but failed to accomplish himself as a uh, formal student in his educational institutions and he had to work uh, from time to time as a carpenter and as a clerk in his grandfather's bank uh, now uh, william faulkner uh, was a grown up young man and uh, during this time of his life of his life faulkner met estel Adam at the time of their meeting she was both popular and exceedingly a fervent very brightly brightly sparkling and immediately stole his heart by the apparent beauty of that lady the two dated for a while but another man named Cornel Franklin proposed to her before Faulkner did and stole her away afflicted by Estelle's engagement to another man faulkner turned to new mentor phil stone a very important figure in his life a local attorney who was impressed by his poetry and his creative work stone invited faulkner to move and live with him in new haven connecticut after being uh, uh, a failure in love he uh, was uh, he was engaged by a mentor a liar phil stone to be crafted as future novelist future short story writer their phil stone nurtured faulkner's passion for writing and encouraged him to write novels and short stories instead of poetry while delving into prose faulkner worked at the winchester 
repeating arms company a distinguished rifle manufacturer for his living he had to work somewhere physically and he went to this rifle manufacturing factory where he was uh, forced to uh, work and then this proved a turning point in his life lured by the war in europe and uh, especially associated with arms and arm making he joined the british royal flying corps in 1918 and trained as a pilot in the first royal canadian air force he had earlier tried to enlist in the us forces but was rejected due to due to his height he was slightly under 5 6 to enlist in the royal air force he lied about several facts changing his birthplace and surname from faulkner to faulkner including you in his name to appear more british to bete ye chalak shakhs hai to foj ki taraf jaane ke liye us forces mein se mauka nahi mila to apne aap ko british citizen show karne ke liye naam bhi badla thoda sa changes ki aur apna birth place bhi jo hai wo change ki aur kisi na kisi tarah ब्रिटिश फोर्सेस में अपने आप को इनलिस्ट करवाने में कामयाब हो गया फाकनर ट्रेन ऑन ब्रिटिश एंड कैनेडियन बेसिस एंड फिनिश हिज टाइम इन टोरंटो जस्ट बिफोर द वॉर एंडेड नेवर फाइंडिंग हिमसेल्फ इन हॉम्स वे नेवर वेंट टू द वॉर फ्रंट एज अ सोल्जियर बट जस्ट गोट द ट्रेनिंग ऑफ ए सोल्जियर ऑन डिफरेंट बेसिस इन कनाडा A man of skilled exaggeration, Faulkner embellished his experiences and sometimes completely fabricated war stories for his friends back home. So, if you are in the army, you are not only taking training, but you are also doing it for the army. But when you are in the army, you are also doing it for the army. But when you are in the army, you are also doing it for the army. But when you are in the army, you are also doing it for the army. As he is a born writer. he can fabricate fanciful stories he even donned the uniform of a lieutenant to bolster his reputation aur ek aur kaam bhi karte hain zahiri taur par ek lieutenant ki jo hai wardi jo hai wo chura kar pehan lete hain halanki ye lieutenant nahi hai he is a simple soldier in the air force to apni shohrat ko badha chada kar pesh karne ke liye zahiri taur par लोगों को इम्प्रेस करने के लिए एक लेफ्टिनेंट की वर्दी भी पहन कर एंड वो रेट वैन ही रिटर्न टू मी सी सी पी आफ्टर रिमेनिंग फॉर सम टाइम अमांगस्ट द आर्मी मैन द सोल्जियर्स द ट्रूप्स फोकनर रिटर्न टू मी सी सी पी हेज एरिया हेज रीजन his home by 1919 faulkner had enrolled at the university of mississippi he wrote for the student newspaper the mississippian submitting his first published poem and other short works however after 3 semesters as an entirely inattentive student he was dropped out he worked briefly in new york city as a bookseller's assistant and for 2 years as the postmaster for the university and spent a short stint uh, period time as the scout master for a local troop group of troops in 1924 phil stone escorted a collection of wagner's poetry the marble faun to a publisher shortly after its 1000 copy run wagner moved to new orleans while there he published several essays for the double dealer a local magazine that served to unite and nurture the city's literary crowd in 1926 faulkner succeeded in having his first novel published soldiers pay as soon as it had been accepted for print in 26 25 and 26 he sailed from new orleans to europe to live for a few months in paris especially during his stay he wrote about the luxembourg gardens very beautiful gardens long side paris that were a short walk from his apartment a 
when William Fokker came back to America from Paris, France, uh, back in Lisbon, American writer Sherwood Anderson, a famous poet and short story writer, uh, who had become a friend of uh, Faulkner, gave Faulkner uh, some advice about his writing. He told the young author to write about his native region of Mississippi. कि जिस चीज से आप अच्छी तरह वाकफ हैं उसके बारे में ज़्यादा लिखें, जहाँ आप रहते हैं, जहाँ आपकी पदाश हुई है, जहाँ आपकी जड़े हैं, the roots, a place that Faulkner surely knew better than northern France. तो गैर मुल्की एक छोटी सी जगह की विजिट से आपने क्या लिखना है और क्या आपने डिपिक्शन देनी है रियल लाइफ तो ये एक अच्छी शर्वर्ड की एडवाइस साबित हुई और इसका कैरियर जो है यहाँ से ब्राइटन अप होना शुरू हुआ इंस्पायर्ड बाय द कॉन्सेप्ट फॉकनर बिगिन राइटिंग अबाउट द प्लेसेस एंड पीपल ऑफ हिज चाइल्डहुड डेवलपिंग अ ग्रेट मैनी कलरफुल करेक्टर्स बेस्ड ऑन रियल पीपल he had grown up with or heard about including his great grandfather as well in many of his novels and uh, short stories william F- clark faulkner uh, was the name of his great grandfather uh, who becomes a main character in some of his stories for his famous 1929 novel the sound and the fury he developed the fictional yokona potwafwa County, a place nearly identical to Lafayette County, in which Oxford, Mississippi, is located. A year later, in 1930, Faulkner released his next famous novel, As I Lay Dying. Uh, dear students, by then, Faulkner had become known for his faithful and accurate dedication. a dictation of southern speech depiction of southern speech he also boldly illuminated the themes and social issues that many american writers left in the dark did not touch at all including slavery racism the good old boys club and southern aristocracy in 1931 after much deliberation faulkner decided to publish sanctuary a story that focused on the rape and kidnapping of a young woman at old miss the area a county it shocked and appalled some readers but it was a commercial success and a critical breakthrough for his career years later in 1950 he published a sequel that was a mix of conventional prose and play forms a requiem for a nun and it was the sequel of his first he published sanctuary novel uh, dear students uh, this period is very important uh, period in his lifetime as william faulkner personally as a writer experienced both elation and soul shocking sadness during this time of his career between the publishing of the sound and the fairy and sanctuary his old flame astral odom divorced to corn franklin and it is a very important uh, turning point again in his life when the old love comes back to him still deeply in love with her faulkner promptly made his feelings known to her and the two were married within 6 months later on Estel became pregnant and in January of 1931 she gave birth to a daughter whom they named Alabama uh, after the name of a province in America and it is also a southern state you know uh, tragically the premature baby lived for just over a week Faulkner's collection of short stories titled These 13 is dedicated to Estelle and Alabama his wife and the dead baby daughter uh, dear students going back to the 30s when he had started publishing his stories and 
novels. Faulkner's next novel after Sanctuary was Light in August, published in 1932. It tells the story of his fanciful county, fabricated county, uh, outcasts. In it, he introduces his readers to Joe Christmas, a man of uncertain racial makeup. Joanna Burden, a woman who sports voting rights for blacks and is later very brutally murdered. Lena Grove, another an important character, an alert and determined young woman in search of her baby's father. And Reverend Gail Hightower, a man besieged by visions and hallucinations. Time magazine listed it along with The Sound and the Fairy as one of the 100 best English language novels from 23 to 2005. Uh, fortunately uh, or unfortunately, William Faulkner had to turn uh, towards script writing, screen writing for films to earn money for his livelihood. After publishing several notable books, Faulkner turned to screen writing in Hollywood. He visited Hollywood many uh, times, I remained there for a number of years as well. Starting with a six-week contract at Metro Golding and Mayer, a very famous filmmaking company, he co-wrote 1933's Two Day We Live, starring the famous John Crawford and Gary Cooper of, of the black uh, era, black filmmaking era of the Hollywood. After Faulkner's father died and in need of money, he decided to sell the rights to film Sanctuary, later titled The Story of Temple Drake, as we have already read. That same year, Estelle gave birth to Jill, the couple's only surviving child. Between 1932 and 1945, Faulkner traveled to Hollywood a dozen times, or more, or more than a dozen times, to toil as a script writer, screen writer, and contributed to or wrote countless films there. Uninspired by this task, uh, overwhelmingly tedious job for a writer to just write scripts, uh, dialogues for films, stories for films, screen writing, uh, in which he was forced to do his or rather manual work. However, he did it purely for financial gains and nothing else. Uh, during this uh, period of his uh, film making, uh, film screen writing productivity for financial gains only, Faulkner continued publishing several novels, including the epic family saga Absalom, Absalom, which was published in 1936, and the satirical The Hamlet, 1940, and Go Down Moses, 1942. In 1946, Malcolm Coley, a very, very prominent critic of the age, published the portable Faulkner, and interest in Faulkner's work was revived again. Two years later, Faulkner published Intruder in the Dust and the tale of a black man falsely accused of murder. He was able to sell the film rights to MGM, another very, very important filmmaking company of the times for $50,000. Now his financial worries were at the peak. So he was forced to sell his scripts to filmmaking companies of the times. But a writer who had no good income from the novel, short story writing, poetry, so he was forced to sell his फिल्म मेकिंग के दुनिया में जहां से पैसा मिलता है तो उधर जाना पड़ा अपनी स्टोरीज को सेल किया वो उनको ज़ारे मॉडिफिकेशंस के साथ 
अल्ट्रेशन के साथ कहानी में नमक मर्च लगा के फिल्म वाले जैसे पेश करते हैं तो ये उसने फाइनेंशियल गेंस के लिए टू रन इज फैमिली अफेयर्स मजबूरन जो है ये हॉलीवुड की दुनिया को ज्वाइन किया वन ऑफ फोकनर्स ग्रेटेस्ट प्रोफेशनल सक्सेस मोमेंट्स केम वैन ई वॉज अवार्डेड द नाइनटीन फोर्टी नाइन नोबेल प्राइज फॉर लिटरेचर रिसीविंग द अवार्ड द फॉलोइंग ईयर द कमेटी डीम्ड हिम वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट राइटर्स ऑफ अमेरिकन लेटर्स दिस अटेंशन ब्रॉट हेम मोर अवार्ड्स इंक्लूडिंग द नेशनल बुक अवार्ड फॉर फिक्शन फॉर हिज कलेक्टेड स्टोरीज एंड द लीजन ऑफ ऑनर इन न्यू ऑरलेंस ही ऑल्सो वन द नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वन नेशनल बुक अवार्ड फॉर द कलेक्टेड स्टोरीज ऑफ विलियम फॉकनर अ फ्यू ईयर्स लेटर फॉकनर वॉज अवार्डेड द नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फाइव पुलिटर प्राइज इन फिक्शन अलॉन्ग विद एन अदर नेशनल बुक अवार्ड फॉर इज नोबल फेबल सेट इन फ्रांस ड्यूरिंग वर्ल्ड वॉर फर्स्ट डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन जनवरी 1961, वन फॉकनर विल्ड ऑल हिज मेजर मैन ऑफ सक्रिप्ट राइटिंग्स एंड मैनी ऑफ हिज पर्सनल पेपर्स टू द विलियम फॉकनर फाउंडेशन एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ वर्जीनिया ऑन जूले सिक्स नाइनटीन सिक्सटी टू को इंसिडेंटली द सेम डेट एज द ओल्ड कलोनल्स बर्थडे फेमस करेक्टर ऑफ हिज नावल विलियम फॉकनर डाइड ऑफ अ हार्ट अटैक ही वॉज पोस्थोमसली अवार्डेड हिज सेकेंड पुलिटर प्राइज इन 1963 for the rivals faulkner created an impressive literary legacy and remains a revered writer of the rural american south having expertly captured the immense complexities of both the region's beauty and its dark past indeed a representative writer of the south you may say a neat and clean writer who depicts uh, all the beauties and ugliness of this region with the truthful depiction of his very fluid prose uh, dear students thank you very much for participating in today's discussion till the next session it is goodbye and allah hafiz from my side thank you very much again